Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness! In the last episode! After emerging from the depths of Citadark Isle, we confronted Ardos, one of Grievel's own bodyguards, and defeated him. He told us that we would have to confer to Master Grievel himself now. In this episode, we carry on with the intent of doing just that. We try heading inside. We have a Pokemon healing machine. And a PC. And Mirror B may have appeared, because that's totally more important than what's at hand. Always got to have Mirror B in mind, of course. We step forward. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now this is quite a surprise. You managed to defeat Ardos. Of course, you have also beaten so many of my followers. Perhaps it's no surprise that you won. I must say that I haven't been this excited in a long time. I do have an appreciation for the strong, you see. However, I also cannot allow your interference. My Shadow Pokemon plan is nearing completion. So for the time being, I think I will have you securely out of the way right where you are now. It's a gigantic wall of glass and it appears impossible to go any further. Yes, you can send out your Aggron and have him double edge his way through that glass. No, that can't even happen. And uh, Aggron's freaking made of rock and steel. I don't even see that hurting Aggron in the slightest. I mean, it's even got Rock Edward's ability. So we can't go forward at all. Only Walken was here. He would think of that brilliant idea of using our Aggron to go through that wall. But we do have this lift down here. Elevator door won't open on that either. So, nowhere to go. I guess we'll just have to give up and go home. <laughs> it's me again, kid. You know, it makes me kind of happy to see you since I've seen you so often. I know you're trying to be cool and all, man, but you've kind of only seen me one time before this. But the way you keep battling me, my cred's taking a beating. Ah, uh, yeah! So Master Grievel gave me this one last chance to redeem myself, but this is it! If I lose this one, there's no tomorrow. Here goes. You mean he's gonna kill you for losing a Pokemon battle? Jeez, I'd find a new follow guy to follow. There he goes with his Donkey Kong pose. He is a little bit like Funky Kong as well with those goggles. He starts off with Slow King, level 42, Water Psychic type, own temple for its ability, Psychic Earthquake, Water Pulse, and Protect. And not only that, also Ursaring, level 43, normal type, Guts for its ability. Brick Break, Protect, Slash, and Earthquake. Once again, his strategy is just Protect and Earthquake. Nothing that more. While it's not a complicated strategy, it can be a tough one to deal with. It's really hard to predict who is going to be using Protect on the first turn. Typically, he'll alternate who uses Protect, so that can make things a little bit easier on you. But he won't always do that, so it can be a little bit difficult to predict. Basically, just have confidence that you can take out his Pokemon in one hit. Rack up damage, do not hesitate. And really... Really? And of course, Brick Break doesn't break Protect, it only breaks Light Screen and Reflect. Oh, this is gonna suck. Okay, Volterra doesn't go down because Slowking doesn't really have that big of a an attack stat, but still, it kind of sucks that that happened. Alright. First Ring protects itself, of course. Alright. Uh, I'm going for the Bite. Going for the Brick Break. Let's hope that this works. Oh, nobody used Protect this turn. Not bad. Bite should finish him off. Slowking is done. Out of there. 1-6 of your team is gone, Gorgon. What now? You haven't taken out 1-6 of my team. What do you got? I'm getting really into this. I just want to taunt him more. All right, what are you sending out? Aggron. Hey, you got good taste, buddy. Level 43, Steel Rock type. Rockhead for its ability, same as ours. Protect, Iron Tail, Earthquake, and Brick Break. Not really all that different from the rest of his strategy. That Iron Tail is definitely formidable. That's really it. Of course, Aggron. Or, of course, Aggron. Of course, Ursaring takes out Gadzooks as soon as I start taunting him, so I've lost 6 of my team now, too. This is a close battle starting off. All right, uh, I don't want to go about this. I think Mustache should probably be the smarter move because I can just use a water type move on that Aggron. All right. Gorgon, I know that you look like a giant ape, but no facial hair that you could ever grow, or body hair for the matter, you could ever compare to the facial hair of Mustache. I love it so much. All right, let's do this. Nobody uses protect once again. Thunderbolt! 
Hit it with the Thunderbolt! I can't get enough of that. I don't know. As of late, I've had a, a liking to Lieutenant Surge. He's always been one of the favorite gym leaders, and I can always see why. Okay. Walrein! Wow, he just has a lot of Pokemon that I like training. Level 44, Ice Water type. Thick fat for its ability. Has an Octo weakness to ice, and it is resistant to fire. Not bad. Earthquake, Double Edge, Protect, and Waterfall. I, I don't have to say anything. Same strategy on all of his Pokemon, really, just with two moves for flavor. That double edge could definitely be a pain in the ass, but that's really about it. Polyrath! Level 42, Water Fighting Type. Water Absorb or Damp for its ability, as it is a Shadow Pokemon. Shadow Rush, Shadow Sky, Shadow Storm. Getting into Polyrath as a Pokemon? Nothing more complicated to say than it's a mixed attacker. It's more physical oriented than special oriented. This lane, I'm not really sure how useful it could be, but hey. Brick Brick and Hydro Pump are helpful. Rain Dance is an excellent support move if you didn't go for that TM earlier. Water Absorb is, of course, the more useful of its two abilities, but that goes without saying. And you know what? I think I'm going to use the Rain Dance. I'm just feeling kind of lucky with it, and I don't think anything else on his team would really benefit from it all that much. And- Oh, come on! Kind of just given me that KO. Really? You know, it's funny, because I was thinking of using, like, Water Pulse or Ice Beam on that Wall Rain just for good measure. But of course I don't. And now I'm paying for it. Critical hit, really? Was that necessary? Oh, well, he takes himself out with Recoil, so that's fine. I didn't lose a Pokemon in the process. Really should have used that on Voltaire, because that would have totally KO'd it, but oh well. Too late now, Gorgon. That's it. You're down to your last two Pokemon. What are you sending out last? Well, maybe we'll see after I start stop leveling up. Mr. Mime, level 42, Psychic type, soundproof for its ability. No sound-based moves will work. It's a Shadow Pokemon. It has Shadow Storm and Shadow Shed for its two moves. As for Mr. Mime as a Pokemon, Mr. Mime is not bad. It is a special sweeper with really good special defense, so it has the ability to do two different jobs. It might not be the fastest Pokemon, and some might not get really considered a sweeper for that reason, but hey, you could do worse than Mr. Mime. Psychic and Thunder Punch and starting moveset gives it some decent coverage. Can't argue against Psychic on it right off the bat, considering what we just encountered a little bit ago not having it. But yeah, I used Mr. Mime myself in the past, and it served me well. Plus, it feels good obtaining it not in a trade for those that played the original Red and Blue. Ah, it always feels so good about that. Now, I do have to say about Mr. Mime, I like how whenever it gets hit by damage, it blushes a little bit. It's like it's embarrassed that it took damage. It's like, uh, I didn't do my job as a Mime right. I didn't, you know, make the glass box that I'm trapped inside of, you know, good enough. Uh. Going with Trifecta, hoping that it doesn't get unlucky. Oh, well, Frozen! Wow, I was about to tangent this thing, though, but man, that's really good. Okay. Uh, Frozen Solace still, damn, that's really, really nice. Anyway, as I'm sure many of you know, there are female Mr. Mimes. This one is indeed one of them. Now, I wanted to bring special attention to this, even though I think I've done this in the past. It's just the fact that it's so, so strange that that happened. Pokemon didn't have genders in the first gen, and when they introduced genders, it just kind of made things awkward that you had female Mr. Mimes. It's... It's because of Mr. Mime that I actually assumed that species of Pokemon had genders. And in fact, that was why I assumed Hitmonchan was female when I was a kid, similar to what I was saying a few videos ago. I assumed Hitmonlee was the boy and Hitmonchan was the girl. And it was kind of even further magnified by the fact that the two Nidorans had, you know, each gender of Nidoran was its own species. I don't think there was any mistaking Jinx for being a female, though, so it just like, when I was a kid, I actually did believe that each Pokemon was its own gender, and I didn't really think about reproduction, obviously, because I was eight. I didn't know about the birds and the bees. Simple as that. So, I don't know, it just the, the female Mr. Mimes, the first time that you see that as a kid, you flip out whenever you see female Mr. Mime, but it's just that its Japanese name is barriered. It has nothing to do with being a Mr. of any kind, so that's why, oh, crap. As soon as I'm praising it, it goes down. Oh well. But yeah, that was just kind of something that I always found kind of interesting is that, you know, there's Pokemon like Mr. Mime that have gender specific names just because they were introduced a long time ago, and they aren't gender specific now. Grah, we're doomed! Mr. Mime flees somewhere. He will end up in a Pokeball held by the wondrous Mirror B someday. Ah, oh, what a lucky Mr. Mime. I wish I could be held by Mirror B and his Pokeballs. That sounds really gross, actually. Bleh! That was the very last chance Master Greville gave me. How can I keep losing to some kid over and over? Uh, actually, I've only beaten you twice. It wasn't that many times. If there was a tree, I'd climb it to get away from all this. He is a giant ape, after all.
And he was kind enough to activate that lift for us after I was about to give just after I was about to give up and go home. So thanks to Gorgon, we can finally go onward. Better heal up right here. At long last, after a whole one battle of being able to do nothing, Gorigan hands our path forward to us. And of course it's gonna lower us into the lava and it's gonna be certain death. Now, again, that's what That's what Grievel would do if he didn't want to challenge. You know, you can't just defeat your opponents like that. It has to be by your own hand. You won't quit being a pest, will you? I find it funny that a peon, a peon named Colax, no less, which sounds kind of funny. It sounds like a, uh, like a type of, like, Ridlet or something like that, like a medication that you used to, like, relax, like, Colax. It sounds like medication, I'm sorry. A anyway, I like how this guy is a line of defense beyond even Gorigan. So it's like they knew he was going to screw up, so they put peons here that they somehow thought were more capable, just to kind of act as another line of defense. All right, so... I don't want to start off this. Uh, Brick Break, no question on that Glalie. That Glalie sucks. Glalie is a terrible Pokemon, and I just want to take it out. No stat over 80. It's got 80 on every stat. It's just all around. You know, that's one thing I always wondered. Why did they give Glalie of all Pokemon to Ash in the anime? I, It just felt so random to me, and yet they would give him Glalie, but for the longest time he didn't have a dark type. And I don't know, it just, it was kind of one of those decisions that I found really, really strange as a kid. Just the fact they gave him Glalie, because Glalie's not good never has. I didn't recommend Snow Runt a long time for go for a reason. It's just such a painfully average Pokemon and evolves at such a late level. And as I'm bashing his choice of Pokemon, of course I have Gadzooks go down. Oh well. Alright. Jinzo, do your stuff. Jinzo's been rocking pretty well lately. Rocking pretty well. Rocking pretty hard lately, I should say. Uh... Bite an Omphoros because I don't have much else to do. And Jinzo, go for the second. Uh oh, Mach Punch. Crap. Uh, I should say that Breloom is a fighting type, though, but I don't really feel it's necessary for me to count the fighting types anymore because I think this is only the fourth fighting type Pokemon that actually had the ability to use fighting type moves on us. I think I've proven my point that everything in Ore is weak to fighting types and there just aren't that many you come across as a result. So, yeah, I think that's kind of the end of that. But, I don't know. Just the fact that. I just found that so strange how there's like so many Pokemon weak to fighting. Like I said, it's like almost a quarter of all array Pokemon are weak to fighting type. And it's the strangest thing. Like, they didn't balance that well, but at the same time, I guess they kind of did because you don't come across fighting type moves used against you all that much. So, I don't know, maybe. Because whenever I was thinking about Pokemon that I wanted to use, I just would always look at them and go, wait a minute, like almost all of these are weak to fighting type. So I did that, and sure enough, I was right. Almost everything is weak to fighting here. Uh, the Psychic on Omphoros just because I want to eliminate the threat there. I know that Dawn fan's probably going to get his Earthquake, though, but I wouldn't trust myself to one-hit it anyway. I think it's going to get it off the attack regardless. So, I think Voltaire is just going to... Wow, paralyzed. Ouch. I think Voltaire is just going to have one really rotten turn. Between getting paralyzed and having a Dawn fan on the field that it didn't attack, I think it's going to... Come on! How often are you going to do that? Really? And why are you using Growl? I'm only using Special Attack. Uh, uh, rollout? Okay. Uh, I was worried about having Earthquake, like most Dawn fans do, but I'll take it. That is... that was freaking stupid. Uh, psychic on Dawn fan, okay. I hope that that bite is able to connect regardless of Jolteon being paralyzed. And wow, uh, Psychic actually didn't do as much as I thought it was going to. I know that I'm not really the... I am having horrendous luck in this battle, and I'm not using Light Screen myself because he's got a physical attack on the field, and then Omphoros is almost done. So that's why I don't see it worth my time. <sighs> he's gonna get off more rollouts, isn't he? He's just gonna totally roll out that whole side of my field. Ugh. I hate rollouts so much. Anyone who grew up playing against Whitney's Mill Tank knows the true wrath of rollout. It just multiplies and you can't do much about it. Okay. And then I remember that every kid wanted to get a Pokemon knowing rollout themselves so that they could use it. And then they're like, hey, why isn't this as good? It only does like five damage. And then when we got older, we learned that it did more damage as it stacked. Okay. Dodrio! Do Dodrio! <laughs> Dugtrio is a shadow Pokemon! I can't even talk now. Alright, Dugtrio. Equipped with a pretty good starting moveset, Earthquake is definitely the move of choice on it. Its other moves are a little bit weird though, but hey. I like the fact that it starts off with Earthquake. Dugtrio is an incredibly fast Pokemon. It is known as the Revenge Killer for a reason. While its attack stat isn't all that big compared to some other Pokemon, it's ridiculously fast and it's just kind of one of those Pokemon you could send out in a just about any situation and it'll be able to clean up what your last Pokemon started with a nice Earthquake. <laughs> and, by the way, should you be at all curious, 
finally we have the soft sand. If you've been wanting the soft sand for your grand type Pokemon, this is where it is at long last. Yeah, this late in our adventure is when they give you the soft sand. Now, Dugtrio is a Pokemon I always have a soft spot for. I have memories of being a kid, going into Diglett's cave, finding a wild Dugtrio, grabbing it, and just beating Lieutenant Surge's butt into the ground with it. It was a fun time. I don't think any, any kid who didn't do that Anybody who didn't do that as a kid, you should go do that whenever you play through the original Pokemon again. It's a fun time. I remember back when I used to uh, speedrun, I used to do that tactic as well. But, you know, the trio was kind of fun to use in single player just because you catch it at like level 30, like before even the third gym in the original game. And I don't know. I always had a soft spot for it for that reason. And oh, that was close. I was hoping it would get a freeze there. I was hoping it would not burn, so I got lucky there. All right, Dawn Fan, go away. Thank you. We got Doug Trio all on its own now, and you know what that means. Shadow Pokemon that are all on their own. Get I actually almost coughed after that. That was kind of funny. All right. Uh, Dodrio is going to be immune to, well, it's not going to be immune to any of its attacks, really, because it's going to be using shadow moves. But, timer ball. And I hope that I get a catch. Use light screen in case its attacks happen to be special. Here we go. And actually, I think all shadow moves are physical, so I think I just wasted that. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, done. All right. So Doug Trio is ours now. You are finished. What have you to save yourself losing just like Gorgon did? God, this isn't happening. It's not real. Theater major, are you? <laughs> he just like backflips and then like shields his face, just shouting to himself that it's not real. Oh well. What is that machine doing? Is it like mixing the lava? It looks like a giant cake mixer or something like that. I don't know, maybe Greville takes up baking in his spare time. I get it. The lava below is the heat source. It's a giant oven, and then he's got the cake maker, like, like the thing that makes the cake batter above it. So it's like he can mix the cake and then he can lower it in the lava and then he can just cook it and he can make giant cakes. That is how he feeds the Cypher peons, despite having hundreds of them. That's how we got so many people to sign in a Cypher, despite it, you know, having fallen all those years ago. I get it. He has free, unlimited cake to offer every one of them, so that they will never go hungry again, and they will always be satisfied. That is a brilliant move, Greville. If I was the lead of an evil team, that's totally what I would do to get people on board. Except I think I would use pie instead of cake, personally. But that's just me. The cake plan is still respectful in its own right. Anyway. We got to this mysterious corridor below where Greville is, and next time on Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, we head up into that giant orb where Greville is. See you guys then.